Okay, so on this notes page, we're going to be breaking down the motion of a projectile that's launched purely horizontally. And when you're looking at it second by second, some of it's already plotted for you here on the grid, but we're going to see how we get all those pictures and the vectors there for the velocities. So the first thing you notice at the top of the page, it says it's a baseball thrown horizontally at 9.80 meters per second. And we just went through the idea that motion in one dimension is independent of motion in other dimensions. And so what we want to do is we want to physically separate the vertical motion versus the horizontal motion. That's what this chart is about. It literally physically separates all the information, so we're not going to be mixing and matching. Matching. Everything involved is a vector, so we do want to assign positive directions. And since it's going to the right and it's going to be falling, we're going to go right ahead and say down is positive and to the right is positive, you know, because that makes sense. Usually initial direction of motion is what we call the positive direction. It is a purely horizontal launch, and so what's the initial vertical velocity? Well, it's going to be zero because it's not being launched up or down, right? At the moment it's being launched, it's only launched horizontally. That's what this first picture here represents when it says t equals zero on your page. What about on the horizontal side? Well, it does say it's launched at 9.8 meters per second, and so we're going to say v naught equals 9.8 meters per second, just like that. Now let's talk about accelerations. Okay, so we know that once we let go of the baseball, the only force acting on it is gravity because it is in free fall, right? And so the vertical acceleration is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared, but is it going to be positive or negative? Well, remember, anytime we deal with this, we always think about what direction that vector is pointing compared to what direction we're calling positive. And putting down, and down is the positive, so of course it's going to be a positive 9.8 meters per second squared. What about on the horizontal side? Well, again, once you let go, you let go. There's no other forces acting on it, and so there's nothing acting on it in the horizontal dimension. The only force is gravity, which can only act vertically, and so the horizontal acceleration is zero. There's nothing acting on it in the horizontal dimension. Okay, so let's say we do want to plot out these pictures here. Well, on the vertical side, if we want to see how far it falls, we can pick any of our favorite kinematics equations. So let's go with the, this one here, delta y equals v naught t plus half at squared. Now, here's the key to using the chart. If you're on the vertical side, you can only use vertical stuff, right? So if I'm looking up here, I see that the initial velocity is zero, which means that anything times zero is zero, so the whole first term drops out. So if you were to put in the time of zero seconds, one second, two seconds, three seconds, you would calculate the displacements here, and you can see they're already sort of plotted for you. And here what I do is I just put these little dashed line pictures indicating that if it were to fall straight down from rest, that's what it would be. In fact, we've already seen this before back on our free fall examples handout. If you were to just compare the chart that we had done before, we would drop the object off the side of the cliff, you would see it fell about five meters in one second, about 20 meters in one second, about 44, 45 meters in three seconds of falling. But remember, it's also going horizontally at the same time. That's really the challenge here in two-dimensional kinematics, keeping in mind that it's always going in both dimensions at the same time. So if we want to plot out where it is horizontally, we pick a kinematics equation on the horizontal side. So we could use the exact same equation if we'd like to. Delta x equals v naught t plus half at squared. But if we're on the right-hand side, if we're on the horizontal side, we can only use horizontal stuff. So here I see on the horizontal side, that acceleration is zero. Anything times zero is zero. So that term drops out. Whereas in this case, we do have v naught. And here you can put in the time for one second seconds, two seconds, three seconds, and plot out where it is. And that's what happens here. You know, it's about 10 meters in one second, about 20 meters in two seconds, about 30 meters in three seconds. And what's really happening, though, is we're really sort of putting together these motions and plotting out its parabolic trajectory, right? Where we said all projectiles follow a parabolic trajectory. It's really just the combined motions of vertical and horizontal here second by second. Now, we don't have to use that equation. Of course, we have delta x equals v bar t, which is probably my favorite kinematics equation because it's usually pretty easy. But wait a second, should we be, are we going to get the same results? Because here we use delta x equals v naught t, here we use delta x equals v bar t, and we look up here, we, we don't have v bar, right? And so if we're going to use this equation, we have to actually calculate v bar. So what, what's another equation we could use to find v bar? Well, that would be this one, right? v bar equals v naught plus vf over 2, just literally the average of initial and final velocities. But again, we look up here, we have the initial velocity is 9.8, we don't have the final velocity, we have to be able to calculate the final velocity at any time to use this. It's getting a little bit complicated, but we need another equation. So here we can use vf equals v0 plus at. Remember, if we're on the horizontal side, though, we can only use horizontal stuff. We can't be using the vertical stuff. That's what the dividing line here is for. So over here, we see, again, the horizontal acceleration is zero. Anything times zero is zero, that drops out. And so what it's saying is that vf equals v0. So if it starts at 9.8 meters per second, at any moment, it's always going 9.8 meters per second. And that means the average of 9.8, 9.8 is v bar equal to 9.8 as well. We can say that v0 equals vf equals v bar. In other words, it's always moving horizontally at 9.8 meters per second because that was the launch velocity, right? Since there's no acceleration horizontally, nothing changes about its horizontal motion. Okay. Now, we can certainly then 
talk about the vertical velocity, and we can just use the same equation. That's you know what I'm trying to show you, that we're using the same equations on either side of the chart here because the motions are completely independent of each other. We just have to make sure if we're on the vertical side, we're only using vertical stuff, right? And so on the vertical side, we have the acceleration, but the initial velocity is zero, right? So we drop that out, and now we can plot out the vertical velocities, which, again, we've actually already done. If you just look at the free fall examples, where, again, we drop the ball off the side of the cliff, we saw at the one second mark, it was moving at 9.8 and then just gain the 9.8 meters per second every time. So on the picture here, we can label horizontally, it's always moving at 9.8 meters per second because that's the launch speed. On the vertical side, again, after one second, it gains 9.8 meters per second. After two seconds, it gains another 9.8, it's now moving at 19.6. After three seconds, it gains another 9.8 and it's moving at 29.4 meters per second. It's getting faster and faster on the vertical side here because it has a vertical acceleration. But the horizontal side, it's staying the same because there's no horizontal acceleration. Now, these are the components of its velocity at one second, two seconds, three seconds. That's not how fast it's really moving, right? What we really need to do is combine these as vectors. So what we really want to do is draw the resultant vector for each of these. Here I'm using what's called the parallelogram method. I'm sort of completing the parallelogram made by the components and just drawing the line down the middle. And of course, if you know, here it's moving down into the right, because that's what the component is showing. The resultant is pointing down into the right, down into the right down into the right. So these blue vectors represent the total velocity at any of these moments, how fast it's actually moving and what direction it's actually moving. So let's break out the calculators and start to do some calculations here. Let's do it for the, the one second mark. Let's, how, let's find how fast it's actually moving at that moment. So we have the vertical and horizontal components. We're just doing a little Pythagorean theorem. We have three sig figs and all the numbers there. So we can use three sig figs in our answer. But it is velocity, so we want to make sure we're finding the angle as well. And anytime we talk about projectiles, since we're looking at it from the side, right, we're not looking top down, we're looking from the side, the angle is always this one here with respect to the horizontal. So as you do, uh, you think about your trig functions, you want to be using whatever inverse trig function you want to use to find this angle here to the horizontal. So maybe you want to pause the video and you know, do those calculations. Okay, so I'm sure that you got the 13.9 meters per second, but what about the angle? Well, really, you didn't have to even do any trick to the angle because you can see the two sides are equal. It's an isosceles triangle. We know it's going to be 45 degrees, but the question is, how do we describe that 45 degrees? Well, a lot of students' first inclination is to say maybe something like southeast. And at that point, I really have to say you, you must stop because it's, it's absolutely not southeast because we are looking at this from the side. Right? So right now, I don't know if you know exactly which way north is from where you're sitting. Maybe you want to you know, take out like the compass app on your phone and find out. But I want everyone to point north. Okay, do it. Actually do it. Okay, so right now, if you're pointing up, you are wrong. Now, I get it that, you know, often when we're looking at a map or a piece of paper and it says north, north is usually to the top of the page. But we're looking at this from the side. You're literally watching this object as it falls down into the right. North is of the horizontal direction. And we don't know which way is being launched. So north has nothing to do with this, right? So uh, everyone point up. Okay, and now everyone point north. You should be pointing somehow horizontally when you're pointing north. And I, should, I think we should all agree that north and up are just not the same thing. Okay, now everyone point south. And it's okay if you don't know which way south is, it's just going to be opposite of north. And right now, if you're pointing down, you're wrong, right? South is a horizontal direction, opposite to where north is. Okay, so now you're pointing south, now everyone point down. Really, do it. Okay, I think we could all agree that south and down are just not the same thing, right? If you're, if you're giving someone driving directions, then you tell them to go south, they're not going to drive themselves off a cliff, right? They're not going to fall down. Okay, so well, how do we describe this angle? We reference the horizontal. So we're going to say it's 13.9 meters per second at 45 degrees below horizontal. Okay, so why don't you just go ahead and do the same thing for the second and third pictures here, where again, we're finding the angle to the horizontal. Sorry, I gave that away for a second, right? And again, we're using three sig figs for everything. So you're finding the magnitude and direction at the two second mark and the three second mark. Pause the video, get your answers, then come to see if you get them correctly. Okay, so we should be getting 21.9 meters per second at 63.4 degrees below horizontal. Again, we're finding the angle to the horizontal, this one here. And for this one, we should be getting 31.0 meters per second at 71.6 degrees below horizontal. Again, you're finding this angle here to the horizontal. Except we just see it getting faster and faster and faster by combining the vertical and horizontal components, finding how fast it's actually moving and what direction it's actually moving at these moments in time.